my inbox and my DMs are full of people saying, can I get an AI job? How do I get an AI job? And that is the wrong question, people. The right question is, how do I turn my current job into an AI job? I'm dead serious, and I'm going to talk about it here. Your goal in 2026 is going to be much more specific than a dream of another job. It's going to be not changing careers, not becoming a prompt engineer, but how can you change the way work actually gets done in your current role using the AI infrastructure your company is already rolling out? I am telling you for 95% of us, that is the way AI is going to come. And we don't talk about it. We talk about changing jobs all the time, but like that's a tiny sliver of the world. For so much of us, it is not about that. I'm actually going to focus on what changed in AI in 2025 underneath the hype, the new mental models that you need to understand what matters in 2026, particularly around AI agents, and a practical path to making your existing job an AI native job. So what actually changed in 2025? Like underneath the hood, underneath all the hype, stepping back, the first thing you need to recognize is that AI moved from a chat interface into being an infrastructure layer this year. So for the last two years, for most of us, the experience of AI has been, it's a chat box, it's a writing assistant, maybe it does some code completion. That is now the most superficial layer of AI. Underneath the surface, three big shifts happened in 2025 that changed the game on AI. Number one is that architecture started to get standardized. Google's recent introduction to AI agents paper is just the latest example of this. The larger perspective, if you step back, is that we have started to get a clear industry definition around an agent as a loop. An agent has a goal, gathers context, it reasons, it acts, it observes. And we have patterns now for multi-agent systems that include planner agents, retriever agents, executor agents, etc. We also have a the beginning of an industry model for agent maturity, from simple tool calling all the way up to self-improving systems, which nobody has or almost nobody has. And finally, we have design principles around how we think around issues like a budgetary authority for agents, boundaries for agents, security identity for agents, still evolving, but it's starting to come into place. The, the reason you need to care about this is that until we had that architecture, agents were mostly theoretical or they were point solutions to problems. Because of the work done in 2025, because that architecture is more standardized, we are now set up to do much more interesting things, much more comprehensive work with agents in 2026. The second big piece in 2025 is that security is no longer a hypothetical. 2025 was a year of shadow IT. Bring your own AI to work. Maybe security won't check. Maybe you're chief information security officer won't notice you brought your personal chat GPT, that is increasingly going to be out of bounds, caught, and not allowed. And the reason I say that is because these CISOs, information officers, have had a year to get their teams in gear to approve a bunch of tools like Claude Code, like chat GPT, like Lovable. And so increasingly, the tools that are allowed are inside the fences now. And the critical thing that you need to be aware of is that the security focus is now moving into that agent space. And so more and more, the real meaningful shifts are going to be done in partnership with your security teams at work. It's not going to be just the marketing team setting up their individual little tool and hoping and praying nobody notices. More and more, that's going to require your partnership with the rest of the IT department. And that is something I will absolutely get into, but it's, it's a skill we need to develop that most of us haven't had to use before because frankly, the ability to deploy technical agents to do this work is brand new. The third major change in 2025 is that enterprises learned where AI agents actually work. This is probably the biggest one. I can't underline this one enough. Across hundreds of deployments, the pattern is annoyingly consistent. Agents are reliable and deliver really good ROI on work tasks when they are bounded in scope, when they are objectively verifiable, when they are repetitive, and when they have clearly defined inputs and outputs. So you can think back office operations, triage operations, claims, lead qualification, document checks, basic compliance, customer support flows. It is not invent our product strategy, the AI agent. It is hey, can you execute this same process we do 10,000 times a week and please don't get bored. That's where AI agents are going. 
So 2025 gave us a lot of clarity, and that shapes how we prepare ourselves in our roles for AI agents. And yes, it will touch all of us. So it gave us clarity on what agents are, how they operate at scale, when, where they're safe, where they're useful, and where they're dangerous if you're sloppy. This all lays the foundation for what comes next. If you're looking ahead to 2026, these are the three mental models that you need to survive in your career as we start to have AI agents more and more in the workplace. Number one, AI is a collaborator on structured work. It is not a magic brain. So I'm gonna say it again, LLMs are pattern machines. They're very, very good at transforming text and code. They, they can map messy inputs to structured outputs very well. They follow explicit instructions increasingly well, and they can do the same thing a thousand or 10,000 times and never get bored. But they are not inherently good at making high stakes decisions with very ambiguous trade-offs. They don't understand your organization's politics or background well. They don't know your context unless you give it to them. And they are very, very bad at respecting boundaries that you have not defined previously. And so the right question is not, can AI do my job? Although I hear that a lot, that, that's wrong. That's not the right question to ask, given what we know about AI agents today. Instead, it is which parts of my job are repetitive, are checkable, are describable, are verifiable? And how do I turn those into workflows that AI can run or assist with? How do I begin to take charge of how AI shapes my job? And if you can't describe the work clearly, that's something that you're going to have to do. The AI just doesn't have a chance at that. The second major mental model is agents plus orchestration are becoming the new middleware. And if that sounds abstract, the key thing to understand is that middleware has always existed in our software stacks. In between backend and front end, there has always been a piece of the stack that translates. That part of the stack now got intelligent. It got intelligent because agents are increasingly going to be that middleware. All an agent is, is a loop around a model. It has tools, it has some kind of state that it's working with, and it has decision lo logic. That's it. The important part here isn't that we label this middleware, it's that we understand that this orchestration layer is going to be driving a lot of how we do productivity and we need to take charge of what that looks like. So what tools does it allow to use? Under what identity is it secure? With what budget? Where, where are the logs and the metrics stored? What does it do when it doesn't know? This is the part that most people don't see or think about, but you need to think about it if you want to have a productive relationship with AI agents in your role you need to at least understand the vocabulary. How models talk to tools and data, maybe through model context protocol, maybe other ways. What are agent to agent protocols? How do teams of agents coordinate and how can you talk about that at a high level, even if you're not an engineer? Control panes, gateways, what are the choke points where organizations are going to enforce security policies and observe behavior? How do you ensure that the agents that are built have the right roles and permissions? I am not expecting you to implement this yourself. Most people won't. But if you want to be taken seriously, you do need to be able to talk at a high level about AI workflows in your area in these terms because that makes you translatable. That makes you accessible to people who will be building this for you and you will want that skill. The third major mental model for 2026 is governance. It's not a bolt-on. It is it's going to be the new operating system, guys. AI is becoming grown up. If your AI adoption story doesn't include security and privacy and auditability and all of that stuff that seems boring, it's not going to be taken seriously. And so you need to be providing proactive answers to, in your domain, where would you allow AI to act autonomously? Where would you allow it to only draft? Where would you require a human approver? How do you shut it down safely? This is no longer just your chief information security officer's problem. It is becoming everyone's problem because AI agents will not roll out successfully if they do not know your local information and data. So where will AI actually reshape your job? Keeping all of that in mind. Fundamentally, you need to think of your job as a stack of workflows. Your job is going to be decomposed and you need to take charge of what that looks like. So don't think of it as doing marketing. Think of it as you run campaigns, you create briefs, you analyze performance, you manage stakeholders. Those are workflows. You don't do product management. Instead, you collect requirements, you prioritize, you write specs, you coordinate launches, workflows again. You don't do finance. Instead, you reconcile, you forecast, you analyze variants, you produce reports. 
again, workflows. Each of these can be decomposed into triggers, what starts the work, inputs, what you look at, transformations, what do you do with it, decisions, outputs, and checks to know if it's correct. AI slots into a structure like that. AI will handle the boring and repetitive parts of those workflows. It is up to you to figure out how that actually shapes in your role. Across industries, the same categories keep getting automated or heavily assisted. Triage tasks, routing tasks, summarization tasks, synthesis tasks, policy and rule tasks, repetitive document workflows like pulling data from forms, glue work across tools, moving information from Excel into Word or vice versa. If you look at your job honestly, for most of us, a non-trivial percentage is in one of those buckets, and that is what is going to move first. Now, the parts that stay human for a long time to come are parts around negotiation, around trust building, around politics, around deciding which problems to solve, around setting strategy, around being accountable when things go wrong. So I don't want you to hear Nate is proposing that I AI away my job. I want you to hear that AI drains repetitive and checkable work out of your role. You should be in charge of what that looks like or someone else will do it for you. And your value is going to shift toward defining workflows, supervising them, handling exceptions, choosing what to build, touching the work that matters. And so when you think about what to do in the next few weeks as you head into 2026, if you want to get a running start, number one, map your work as if you were a systems designer. I've given you a cheat code here. Write down your workflows. Write down what triggers them, what inputs there are, what outputs there are, what decisions there are. Learn to express those workflows to the tools you already have. Try something even if it's prototypy in ChatGPT Enterprise or in Copilot or in Gemini to get the idea of what that workflow would look like so you can show a workable prototype when IT comes along and has an AI agent initiative. I'm not saying spin up rogue infrastructure. I'm saying try and prototype something so you get a living feel for what AI agents working with you would look like and then be in the driver's seat when you have these conversations with your engineering teams. I would also encourage you to build a relationship with the people championing AI in your org. Maybe that's you because you watch this channel, or maybe it is someone else who is responsible for the technical side. But either way, make sure that you are finding the right team who is responsible for AI initiatives in your area, that you are showing them you've done your homework and you're thinking inside the existing organizational guardrails, you're thinking about workflows, you're thinking about patterns and tools. At that point, you're no longer a random person. You're a valuable champion and an ally who speaks both languages, the messy reality of the business language and the constraints of the platform that the technical teams think about. And you are in a position to be a fluent translator of AI and drive how AI agents work with you in your role. That is a very valuable position. And that is what you need to be able to do to be in the driver's seat. This is what I wish I could tell 95% of people who are not going to switch jobs in the next year for AI roles. This is what you need to know to be in charge of AI in your role. So I hope this has been helpful. There's a lot more written up on the Substack, including some prompts to help you think through this. My goal is to give you a guide so that you can meaningfully engage with your existing role and prepare for it now before we go into 2026 and AI agents are absolutely everywhere. Good luck.